Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh. Students, today we are going to do latest financial awareness questions, right? So in the series of sharing important financial awareness questions, today I am sharing 10 important questions. We are doing these 5 days, right? For IBPS, RRB, Scale 2 and Scale 3, 2023 exam. Okay. So let's start the session. Students, before starting, let me tell you IBPS, RRB, Scale 2, Scale 3, 2023 course, we have already started. And in this course, we are providing video classes, notes, test series, power capsules, live sessions, interview preparation guidance. Everything is available on bankexamstudy.com. Complete coverage of the syllabus is there in the course, right? So link to join the course is available in the description. Please check the description. So RBI's digital payment index. So first of all, what is digital payment index? To track the performance of digital payments in India. To assess the deepening and penetration of digital payments in India, there is an index by RBI. We call it the digital payment index. There are five comprehensive parameters. There are five comprehensive parameters. And there are proper weightage to each of these parameters. So let's focus here. Payment enablers, payment infrastructure, demand side factors, supply side factors. So uh, demand side means the uh, the people like uh, you and me who are going to make the payment whether we have the proper mobile devices or whatever right we have installed the apps right for upi and everything supply side whether they have the proper infrastructure payment performance the payment failure rate etc consumer centricity right so payment performance has the highest weightage in the digital payment index payment performance has the highest uh, weightage so payment performance has the most significant weightage in the index so please remember that ye aap bilkul ek bar yaad rakh le. that is really really important can be asked in the exam uh, next question what do you mean by aggregate monetary resources uh, what is the indicator referred to as aggregate money supply aggregate money supply so let me tell you uh, before going to through this let me tell you m1 m2 and m3 you should know that m1 means the currency with the public the money the notes that you have in your pocket uh, plus the demand deposited with the bank the money that you have with the that you have deposited in your savings or current account that is m1 m2 is the m1 plus the money that you have in the post office that is m2 so m3 is m1 plus the fixed deposit the time deposit we also call fixed deposit as time deposit with the banking system so that is m3 that is m3 so m3 is actually the money in the circulation m3 is the total money in the economy okay m3 is the total money in the economy that is our answer aggregate money supply that is the total money in the economy that is m3 who is the chairperson of expert committee on urban cooperative bank set up by RBI? So recently that was set up. NS Vishwanathan was the chairperson of the committee to strengthen the sector. Uh, NS Vishwanathan committee was set up. Payment banks can provide which of the following services? Cur opening current accounts of firm. Yes, they can do that. Retail lending, they can't do. Retail lending, uh, they cannot provide loans or credit cards uh, to the general public. It is not possible except deposit uh, up to two, uh, 15 lakhs. 2 lakh tak they can afford, uh, accept. 15 lakh they cannot. So current account they can open. They can sell mutual fund policies, pension and insurance. So 1 and 5 is a correct answer. Hai? So as I told you up to 2 lakh rupee per customer, they can accept the deposit. Okay, That is why they are not very popular as of the moment. With reference to the RRBs in India, consider the following statements. RRBs were established after uh, the recommendations made by the Narsimham, M. Narsimham committee. The ownership uh, is split between, first one is actually correct. Uh, it was, uh, you know, established after the recommendations made by Narsimham committee. The ownership is split between central and the state government, which is not correct. Sponsor bank is also there in the picture. So this one is false. They have been created with a view of serving uh, primarily the rural areas of India with basic banking and financial services. Have you ever seen an RRB in the urban areas? No, because they have been uh, 
established to serve the rural population right so which is actually correct the third point is correct right so first and third are correct the ownership may thoda doubt hai central government has 50% ownership state government has 15% and sponsoring bank uh, so a proper uh, commercial banks they are the sponsored bank most of the time public sector banks are the sponsored banks so they sponsor these rrbs right, right? so they are 35% owners of these rrbs 50% central government 15% state government and 35% sponsoring banks okay so the second point here was wrong what is the basis of four tier structure suggested by urban cooperative banks by the expert committees so committee that i we were discussing in the last in the previous questions i guess fourth questions this is a very important uh, point so please remember the table uh, the tier is dependent how the uh, urban cooperative banks have been categorized they are categorized on the basis of the deposit size if the deposit is up to 100 crore it is a tier 1 urban cooperative bank if the deposit is 100 to 1000 crore it is a tier 2 1000 to 10000 crore tier 3 above 10000 crore tier 4 there are regulatory prescriptions as well regarding minimum uh, net worth 25 lakhs for tier 1 50 lakhs for tier 2 5 crores for tier 3 50 crores for tier 4 and CRAR requirements are also different okay so students here the deposit size is a basis of four tier structure suggested for urban cooperative banks by the expert committee with reference to urban cooperative banks in India consider the following statement they are uh, primarily registered as cooperative societies under provisions of societies registration act 1860 which is actually not correct RBA directly supervises urban and multi-state cooperative banks CRR SLR Basel 3 norms are same as commercial banks which is actually not correct so this is not same this is different even for different tiers of urban cooperative banks it is different it is different for commercial banks various tiers of urban cooperative banks so it is not correct and some uh, it is registered under uh, the society's registration act doesn't apply the ucbs are primarily registered as cooperative societies under the provision of uh, respective state cooperative societies act or multi-state cooperative societies act 2002 so this one is not correct okay so only two is the answer you can pause that uh, you know video and you can just read it if you want to In detail me we have done that <clears throat> let's move forward which of the following statement is correct regarding the narsima working group 1975 it recommended the establishment of R, uh, RRBs to provide credit and banking facilities to rural areas. It recommended the establishment of NABAD to act as an apex institution for rural finance. It recommended the establishment of SBI, which is not correct. It recommended the establishment of IDBI or it recommended the establishment of SIDBI. So it recommended the establishment of RRBs, the Narsimham uh, working group. It is Narsimhani Narsimham. So A is the correct answer. Which of the following are part of PSL framework? Priority sector lending. We do the priority sector lending analysis in depth on bankexamstudy.com. Depth mein hum ye karte hain PSL and we update that whenever there is a new RBA circular. We remake the whole PSL video. We remake it. We discard the old video and we make the new video, right? So uh, whichever uh, are the part of the PSL framework, marginal farmers, affordable housing loan, public employees, obviously they are not part of uh, the PSL framework. Beneficiaries of various government schemes, the government national rural urban uh, livelihood missions, renewable energy projects. So all these are part, I guess, but um, the third one, uh, they are not the part, okay. <clears throat> Agriculture, MSMEs, export finance, education, housing, social infrastructure, renewable energy, <clears throat> uh, other weaker uh, sections, minority community, these are the part of the priority sector lending. <coughs> Let's move forward to the question number 10. Which of the following are external benchmarks used by banks to decide their lending rates? RBI repo rate, cash management, bills yield, uh, 91 days T bills uh, yield 182 days T bill yield benchmark decided by an organization named 
एफ बी आई एल फाइनेंशियल बेंच मार्क्स इंडिया लिमिटेड सो विच ऑफ द बेंच मार्क्स आर आर नॉट यूज आउट ऑफ दम कैश मैनेजमेंट बिल्स आई गेज नॉट यूज सो एक्सक्लूडिंग सेकेंड वन दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ एंड फिफ्थ एक्सक्लूडिंग द सेकेंड वन ऑल ऑफ दम आर एक्चुअली यूज ओके सो स्टूडेंट दैट्स ऑल फॉर टूडे दैट वॉज अ प्रिटी शॉर्ट सेशन वी प्रोवाइडेड टेन क्वेश्चन Uh, for IBPS RRB Scale Two and Scale Three GBO 2023 course, and in this course, as I already told you, we are covering the entire syllabus, and you can also WhatsApp us with your doubts. List of our successful students who took the uh, Bank of Maharashtra Journalist Officer 2022 course, and they cracked their respective exams. All these students who took our courses in the past, for the GBO Scale Two and Scale Three uh, 2022, 2021, uh, 2021 PNB. All these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams, I'm really, really happy for them. If there is any doubt in your mind, please ask your doubts on our WhatsApp, and we are going to answer your doubts. I hope you already got the WhatsApp number. That is nine zero six seven two zero one triple zero. This is the WhatsApp number. Uh, otherwise, the link to join the course is already available in the description. Please check the description. That's all for today, students. Thank you, and have a very nice day. Bye.